Jet lag, the worst part of traveling to Europe. But have we found a way to eliminate the pain? Good morning, jet setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. We're headed to Europe. That's right. It's morning and we're going to Europe. Let me tell you why. Most flights from the U.S. to Europe are overnight, and the ones from the East Coast, clocking in at as little as six hours, well, they aren't even long enough to get any real rest. But there is another way. We're leaving at 8.45 in the morning to reach London by 8.40 tonight. Join us to find out whether this daytime flight is the best way to reach Europe without the jet lag. Our day began at a Newark Airport hotel when our alarm went off at 4.45 a.m. or 9.45 in London. We were in the shuttle bus to the airport by 5.30. And that's about 30 minutes from the hotel room to the Polaris Lounge. Let's, uh, let's check it out. Only international business class passengers are able to access the Polaris Lounge. And a massive benefit of these early morning flights is that the Polaris Lounge just isn't very busy. Since most international flights leaving the East Coast are scheduled for the late afternoon and evening, our only experiences here have been seeing it quite full. I've never seen this lounge so empty. This is a reason to book this flight just by itself. We did arrive before the dining room opened, but that soon changed. That said, we opted to grab something from the buffet this time, rather than eat breakfast in there. When it comes to battling jet lag, people have strong feelings, and many frequent flyers have their own favorite approach. I hope you'll leave your recommendations in the comments below. There's no perfect way to do this because everybody's body is different. That said, the more you can do to maximize your sleep, the better off you are. Here's a bit of my lecture from the Delta One video we made. 24 hours in a day, but we're losing five hours by going to London, so really we're gonna have a 19 hour day. Now, I usually get six to eight hours of sleep, and that's easy to do in a 24 hour day, but with only 19, I've gotta maximize it somehow. So by going over in the morning and sort of burning daylight by traveling across the Atlantic and then getting into London at night, I'm reasonably confident I can go to bed at a normal time and get a good night's sleep, but only time will tell. But again, everybody has their own trick for adjusting. It's noon in London, so this is just helping me get adjusted. <laughs> Cheers. When our airplane, a 777, decked out in the Star Alliance livery showed up, we decided to make our way over to our gate. There are nine morning flights from the East Coast to London today, so you have some options if you look around. New York has the most daytime options, but you'll also find flights from Chicago, Washington, Boston, and even Halifax. Our flight today is on a 777-200 in the Star Alliance livery. This is so exciting. I love these special liveries, but what's your favorite airline alliance? Let me know in the comments below. It's worth saying we could have flown in from our home in Greensboro, North Carolina this morning, but that would have meant just an hour connection and that's a little too tight for us here at Newark. So we came in last night, booked a hotel room on points and now flying over on points. Our crew just boarded. Looks like we should be getting on this plane in just no time at all. Let's get this trip started. Ordinarily, transatlantic flights leaving in the evening are full of passengers anxious to settle in for some shut-eye. Meanwhile, the flight attendants will soon be up in the aisles, offering a service which can get in the way of a restful night's sleep. But on this daytime departure, there's no need for these lie flat seats. In fact, I want to do my best to stay awake for as long as I can on this trip. On a flight like this, we really don't need the lay flat seat, but we found this redemption for 60,000 miles and it, it just made sense to do it. I was excited about this menu. Airline breakfasts are often lamented as being terrible, but I had my fair share of really tasty ones. I was optimistic about the Gruyere baked egg. Nothing quite as refreshing as a pre-departure cup of orange juice. We certainly are happy to have you on board today. Our flight time is 6 hours and 21 minutes. It's a mostly smooth ride, so we do expect some turbulence in the middle of the flight. About three hours into that. One thing you can count on at Newark is a pretty long taxi, so I'm, I'm glad I can settle in and get, uh, get comfortable. In-flight entertainment that works on the ground is always a great thing, and I like that United showcases what to expect on board. There were plenty of choices, and the Wi-Fi, which was available for purchase, was sufficiently fast. But soon enough, we were in the air.
I settled into the infinitely adjustable seat. Maybe my favorite benefit of these daytime departures? Well, it's gotta be these views. And service began at 33,000 feet over Hartford, Connecticut with a hot towel. In addition to their regular service, many airlines, including United, offer an express service in business class, which takes less time and allows passengers to get a bit more rest. However, with no pressure to get to sleep, I was able to really enjoy the friendly skies. Unfortunately, the chef seemed to have forgotten the cheese in my Gruyere baked egg, and the pancakes on the menu hadn't been loaded. On a nighttime flight, as soon as the first service is done, most everyone goes right to sleep. But on this trip, I was able to enjoy stunning views of Nova Scotia. No matter what seat you're in during a nighttime flight, you might have some trouble sleeping for more than three hours on a transatlantic flight. On those typical nighttime trips, the cabins get quiet after the first service is over around two hours into the trip. About 90 minutes before landing, things get loud again when the second service begins. On this flight, we had a chicken and pasta dish. Of course, you could skip the meals altogether or even choose to have an express service, but I've heard from a lot of viewers that the noise in the cabin can make it tough to sleep. At most, I'd count on getting three hours of sleep on a six-hour transatlantic flight. But again, that's why these daytime flights are so great. No need to sleep today. And we'll see how this experiment worked out tomorrow. But for now, it's time for the Jeb Score. This unscientific and completely subjective system allows us to give you a sense of our impressions on board. First, the lounge is one of the best, and seeing it as empty as we did this morning really gave us a sense of just how nice it can be. Five stars here. The Polaris seat is also remarkable. I find it extremely comfortable, and it earns five stars too. The in-flight entertainment was solid, and I was never bored on board. And in-flight Wi-Fi, of course, is always a great feature. Four stars here. The food was a real miss for United. Now, I know breakfast gets a bad rap on planes, but I've had plenty of great onboard breakfast, and this just wasn't one. Two stars here. The service was really good, particularly on the part of our purser. We really like seeing proactive service, and this crew offered it. They earned five stars. All in. That's 21 out of 25 possible stars, but the real test, well, that comes tomorrow. It's just after nine o'clock at night here, and uh, let's see, four o'clock back home. We're actually headed off to Frankfurt tomorrow, so we're gonna grab a hotel here at the airport, catch a night of sleep, and uh, hopefully be fresh and ready to go uh, tomorrow morning. It is eight o'clock in the morning, just woken up, and I'm feeling fresh and ready to go. It took me a little while to fall asleep last night. I was kind of laying there for a little while, but I did have a full night of sleep, and I feel really fresh today, so there might be something to this. I think we won over the skeptic. Between now and the next time, see you in the sky.